Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an amazing lemon berry meringue pie. So let's get started. First off, I'm gonna make the perfect crisp butter crust. So in a large bowl, I'm adding 180 grams of all-purpose flour. That's one and a half cups. If you have your own pie crust ready to go, skip ahead to the mark below for the filling. For a touch of sweetness, I'm adding one tablespoon of granulated sugar, and for a little contrast, half a teaspoon of salt. Grab a whisk, and just mix it up. Our scale's done, and you might notice I have some ice water hanging out. This is very important. Always use ice cold water when you're making pie crust. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in half a cup or 113 grams of cold cubed unsalted butter. Work the butter into the flour mixture until you have pieces that are between the size of almonds and peas. You want some big pieces of butter in there for nice flaky tender moments. And if you have really hot hands or you just don't feel like it, you can use a pastry blender instead. Like this, very handy. I love doing this section by hand though because I have total control over the butter size and I find it enjoyable. I have a nice mixture of sizes for the butter between almond and pea sized. It's time to add in ice water a tablespoon at a time. You'll need around a quarter cup or four tablespoons, but it could be four, it could be five, or it could be six. Sprinkle it in, give it a mix, and repeat. I'm kind of glossing over this because I'm assuming most of you have made pie crust before. If you haven't, or you want a full tutorial, you can click up here for my best homemade pie dough recipe. You know your dough is ready once you can squeeze a clump together and it holds, so here. I'm close, it's almost holding together. Take two. That's good, that's where I want it. It's shaggy, but it's sticking together. Now knead this dough together in the bowl. You're gonna press down and forward. You're basically like squeezing the butter into little flat pages that'll become wonderful flakes. Pop this onto your counter. Shape this into a disc and press everything together. Then wrap well, and I'm gonna chill it for one hour or up to three days. You can make this ahead of time so the pie comes together more quickly or just like squeezing in moments when you're free in the kitchen. In you go. And by the way, this delicious recipe just so happens to be from the summer chapter of my cookbook. So if you have a copy, head over to page 281 and bake along with me. And if you don't, there's links in the description box below. Grab your chilled pie dough and add it to a lightly floured surface. I'm gonna roll this into a 12 inch round and then pop that into my pie dish. Just keep your dough moving. Once the pie dough's all rolled out, just roll it off. Grab a nine inch pie dish and we're gonna carefully transfer it over. Don't press down, push it in from the edge. Now fold the edge under and give it a crimp. This pie is visually stunning because of the components, so I don't have to be fancy with my pie crust. It could be like a nice rustic granny one, just like I like. Okay, now just crimp it up. Okay, good. Chill your pie crust in the freezer for at least 15 minutes. It could be overnight. It needs to set up, otherwise it'll melt and shrink and it'll be horrible when you bake it. In you go. My crust is nice and chilled. I'm gonna grab some egg whites and brush the edge of my pie. This is gonna make it a little bit shiny and golden, which I love. Now I'm topping the pie with parchment paper and pie weights. I also have some foil in here. I like to keep the walls up, up high. My crust is ready to go into the oven 400 for 25 minutes. Then we're gonna take out the paper and weights and everything and bake at 375 for an additional 12 to 15 minutes or until it is golden and beautiful. In you go. My pie crust is out of the oven, cooling, and it smells amazing. Setting that aside, and now let's make our lemon filling. Into a large bowl, I want six egg yolks but we're also gonna use four of the egg whites. So set those aside. <laughs> Crack everything into a small bowl first, because you never know when things are gonna shatter in your hands. All right, I'm gonna use my clean hands to separate the yolk from the white. The white goes in that bowl, the yolk goes in the big bowl. Repeat this process until you're all done. One. Okay, 
This is all I need for the meringue, so I'm setting that aside. Don't want to get it messed up. Okay. Boop. And our last egg. You can separate yolks however you like. I know there's a bunch of gadgets, but I find that my soft hands are the best thing. Betrayed. <laughs> Betrayed by an egg yolk. <laughs> that almost broke. Six egg yolks, two extra egg whites for breakfast. Whisk this together until they're nice and smooth. You're not frothing them up, you're just breaking everything apart. Okay. That looks nice. Set that aside. Grab a medium saucepan. We're gonna combine a lot of delicious things in here, starting with three quarters of a cup of fresh lemon juice. Has to be fresh. One and three quarter cups water. To sweeten things up, I want one and a third cups of sugar, granulated please. A quarter teaspoon of salt for contrast. My favorite and amazing addition in this recipe is half a teaspoon of cardamom. It adds such a wonderful depth of flavor and you just like, you pick it out and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. What is this? It's cardamom. So I think cardamom has some citrusy notes when I taste it. I love pairing it with lemon. So try a little sprinkle in your next cupcake or cake. You're gonna love it. To thicken things up and get the perfect gooey, wonderful consistency, I'm adding a third of a cup of cornstarch. That's 45 grams. In you go. Don't touch it. I hate the way cornstarch feels so much. It really makes me sad. But it's so delicious and does good things, so balance. I'm gonna whisk this together. This pie actually has a beautiful color, but the color comes from the egg yolks, not from the lemon juice. It's so funny, because you think it has like, oh, a lovely lemony color. That's the egg yolks. It's time to put this over medium heat and we're gonna whisk pretty constantly for three to seven minutes or until it starts to thicken up. Let's take this onto the oven. There we go. Medium heat. Right. And just start whisking. Overheat the cornstarch will activate and thicken up. The water is gonna get really hot and when we add that to the egg yolks, it'll help cook the egg yolks in a nice gentle way to create a wonderful soft custardy filling. If you add too much cornstarch, it's like rubber, very unpleasant. If you add too little, it's too soft and runny, so it's frustrating to cut a piece. So it's just the right amount for that perfect texture and perfect taste, because texture affects taste. Right now it's really watery, not thick at all. I'm looking for a thickening action and for the whisk to leave a trail. I love this pie so much. The crust is crisp and golden. The filling, of course, is like full of lemon flavor, kissed with cardamom, and it's like that wonderful, soft, custardy texture. The cloud of light meringue on top, and to finish it all, there's swirls of berry jam. You can use homemade preserves if you have them. You can use any of your favorite flavors, but it adds a, like, it's really nice when you bite into the pie, and you have this that extra layer of flavor that you weren't really expecting. And it also looks pretty, too. Don't forget to keep stirring. This is just starting to thicken up. I grabbed a thermometer. It should be 175. Oh, look, it totally changed. Come take a look. See, you can see it's a thicker mixture now. We're gonna go back to the counter now because we have to temper and combine our mixtures. All right, I'm gonna grab one cup of this amazing gooey mixture now. I love the texture of it. And slowly whisk it into my egg yolks. This is tempering the mixture, so I'm warming up the eggs and like just getting them ready to get hot. Whisk it together so it's really nice. Now we're gonna return the pan to medium heat and slowly combine everything together again. Back over medium heat, I'm gonna slowly and carefully whisk in my yolk mixture. There we go. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh my gosh, the color is so nice. Stir constantly for three to seven minutes or until it starts to bubble and you see trails being left by the whisk. This is just about there. Those big burpy bubbles are what you wanna see, just like that. So I'm gonna take it off heat and it's time to get this pie assembled. The filling is almost done, but we need to add one quarter cup of butter, cold and cubed, right inside, and then whisk that in until the butter is completely melted. The simple addition of one quarter cup of butter makes all of the difference. It's gonna give you a beautiful silky soft mouthfeel and it changes the way you taste the lemon. It's gonna feel so rich and decadent. And as a final plus, it's also a thickening agent. My butter's all melted, so just pour this into your pie crust now and get every last drop out. Unless you wanna do a little tasting right now, which is totally an option. 
Top your meringue with a sheet of plastic, just so it doesn't form a skin. And this goes into the fridge to chill for three hours or up to overnight. It needs some set time, so don't try to skimp. But we'll be back in a moment with editing. My pie is just about chilled, so it's time to make a delicious meringue. Into a medium bowl, I'm adding four egg whites reserved from before, along with three quarters of a cup or 150 grams of granulated sugar. In you go. Whisk this up until it's nice and smooth. And if you look at the texture, it looks gloopy and full of sandy little sugar pieces, which is not delicious. I'm gonna place this over a bowl of simmering water so it's steam heated, the water will not touch the bowl, and just whisk constantly. This will change characteristics drastically. Then we're gonna whip it up. Place your heat proof bowl over that simmering water and just whisk, whisk, whisk. You're making a Swiss meringue, which is lovely, cloudy, marshmallowy amazingness. So right now it's just like sandy junk nonsense, but the sugar will dissolve as the egg white cooks. And all you have to do is whisk so that it heats evenly. Don't go crazy. You can actually leave this alone for a few minutes if you have to, and then come back to it. And once it's warmed up, then you get to whisking. This, by the way, is the beginning of Swiss meringue buttercream. You can use the meringue to do all sorts of delicious things, or you can add butter to it and turn it into a buttercream. But for today, our pie has enough butter on the bottom and wants a cloud of light meringue on top, mixed with that berry situation. After just a few minutes with occasional whisking, uh, I'm temping this out and I'm at 140. I wanna be at 160 for food safety health. You can also do another check. If you don't have a thermometer, use your clean fingers Dip it in, and you should be able to rub the mixture together. It'll feel completely smooth. There's not gonna be any sugar grit, and it'll feel hot to the touch. So that's when you know it's ready to go. So no sugar, nice and smooth. This feels hot and smooth to the touch, and it's just over 160, so I could take it off heat and move this back onto my stand mixer fitted with whisk attachment. Pour your mixture into the bowl and get all of that egg white out. Now you'll run the mixer on medium high for about 10 minutes until it is warm to the touch and you'll see thick, gorgeous, glossy peaks. It'll be shockingly beautiful. Shocking. But for now, you can just let the mixer run, set a timer and get a couple dishes done. Just about eight minutes later, it's all collected in the whisk, so I know the meringue is ready. Look at that beautiful, sharp peak. It's so pretty. It's like a giant marshmallow. You can feel it with your knuckle. Mine's actually cool to the touch, which is great. That can only mean it's time to assemble our pie and dig right in. Look at this meringue. Look how thick it is. No worries, it's not gonna fall. Grab your meringue, plop it, oh, plop it onto your pie. All you wanna do is get the meringue completely covering the pie so it's touching the crust, and then you can make it look pretty. Now for the fun part, we're gonna drop teaspoonfuls of this beautiful jam, any jam that you love, swirl it in. So, a little plop, and just keep going all over the pie. You'll be using two to four tablespoons depending on how jammy you want it. Swirl that jam in with the tip of a knife. Just get nice little bits going all the way through. And you're also working the jam down into the meringue. I think that's pretty good. An optional finish is a kitchen torch to torch the meringue and make a beautiful dramatic finish. There we go, just a light touch and you really get some good marshmallow vibes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Look at this beautiful pie. Stunning, if I don't say so myself. Give your pie a cut and it's ready to enjoy. Oh my gosh, that crunchy, amazing, crisp butter crust is such a nice contrast to the soft, luscious lemon filling and this marshmallow cloud on top of it. It's just heavenly. It's basically taking my breath away. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe from my book. And if you like this video, check out my book playlist.